Hi friends, so it is currently the 7th of August at, what time is it? 12.43 p.m. And I decided to start a vlog about my reading experience of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I decided to do this because Frankenstein is just such a well-loved, well-known classic. I feel like I haven't heard a single person who's read it who like hated it. I've heard a few people who don't like it as much or people who are just fine with it, but most of the time people seem to really enjoy it. And I really, really want to read it and have yet to do so. So finally, I'm in the mood for it. For those who are curious how I'm applying this to the Newt's Magical Readathon, which is this month in August, um, I one of the prompts is to read a book with fire on the cover. And originally I was going to read Bell Book of the Lost and Found by, oh gosh, who was it by? I'm looking over there because my bookshelf's like right there, but it's Moira Fowley Doyle. But I just wasn't super in the mood for that and I really have been in such a classics mood all of a sudden mostly because I realized a few weeks ago that Victober was getting closer and so I just got in a really like huge Victober mood like I'm so excited and I hope I can maintain that excitement for when it actually arrives but because I had that excitement I was like I really just want to read classics and I was really in the mood for this in particular so I decided to just pick it up there are some editions that have fire on the cover even though mine personally doesn't but since there are editions that have that fire on the cover I'm going to count it for that prompt I may still get to Spellbook of the Lost and Found and if so awesome I'll just count that but in case I don't we're just gonna count this anyway last night I read the first like 10-ish pages of it so all the letters that set up the frame narrative for Frankenstein so if you don't know Frankenstein is set up with this man who's writing letters to his sister and he's a captain of a ship that is sailing from Russia to the North Pole and so he's writing to his sister in England and telling her his experiences and he ends up meeting a man well first of all he sees a strange figure riding on a sledge um, and then a few hours later they find another man who is riding on a sledge who they pick up and he goes with them to the North Pole, but he has a very mysterious past and he starts to tell this story. I'm assuming it's Victor Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein. I could be totally wrong, but that's what I'm assuming based on what I know about this book. So I've read that frame narrative, which I personally didn't know was a thing. And I really, really liked the setup. Like it just that icy place that's so abandoned, no one's up there. And then suddenly you see these two men that just happened to be in this super desolate area. One of them looks like he's going to die. The other is like very huge. And so it very much sets up that eeriness. Um, and I really, really liked that. So, so far so good. I am not sure how fast I'm going to read this because I'm also, I'm mostly focusing on getting through the two humongous books that I've been working on for ages, um, Count of Monte Cristo and Atlas Shrugged. I am almost done with Count of Monte Cristo. Like I literally only have like seven and a half hours of the audiobook left. So very, very close. And then Atlas Shrugged, I'm pretty close and should, I've set it up so I'll finish it by the end of this next week. Um, but because I'm focusing so much on those, I don't know how much I'm going to read of this every day. There are probably going to be some days over the next week I don't get to this at all including possibly today. I'm hoping I can get to it some today, um, but we'll see. <laughs> I'll just update you as I go along, as I read a few more chapters, I'll let you know, and you'll just be able to see my real-time thoughts on everything going on in this, and I promise no spoilers, though. Should clarify that. This will be spoiler-free, so if you're concerned about that, don't worry. Um, I'm not going to go into spoilers, but I will be sharing my thoughts on and feelings about things that are going on. So anyway, there's that. And I will update you once I've read a little bit more of this, again, hopefully tonight, but no guarantee. Hi guys, so quick update for Frankenstein. I have just read up to chapter four last night. It is the 10th of August, so a few days later. And I have not been reading very much Frankenstein. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog, I'm focusing mostly on Atlas Shrugged as far as physically reading. But I am nearly done with Atlas Shrugged. By the end of this week, I should finish it. So, and in the meantime, I will continue to work my way through Frankenstein. But 
As far as my thoughts so far, I am still really, really enjoying it. I think it took me a second to really get into it, mostly because I am very much a dialogue person. Like, I like reading dialogue, and most of this is just someone telling a story. There's not a lot of real dialogue, at least so far. Maybe that will change later on. But thus far, there's been very little dialogue between characters, uh, just explanation. But I am about at the point where he's really going into his experiment. Looks like um, he's going to create his monster very soon, which is really exciting. Uh, I do, despite the fact that there's not a ton of dialogue, which is my preferred, I really am liking Mary Shelley's writing. I feel like it's very approachable, it's very easy to read. And I understand why this is often read in high schools because it's very easy to get into because the language isn't overly pretentious feeling or just difficult to read in our modern language. So really liking that. I really like Victor Frankenstein's narrative voice. Primarily, it's just interesting to see how arrogant he is as a young man, but he's telling the story after everything happens, all the bad happens, whatever that is, because I haven't read that book, this book yet. You get this sense of he regrets his actions, but he's also trying to be honest and be like, yeah, I was very arrogant and he's willing to show those thoughts and he still kind of has that in him, but he also has been humbled a lot by his experiences and I'm interested to see where that growth came from, um, what exactly happens, because all I know about this is literally just that he basically creates a monster he brings a mishmash of dead bodies back to life that's all I know about it so I'm interested to see exactly what happens and what prompts him to really humble himself and really feel the need to change so anyway it's really good so far and I hope I end up becoming a lover of Mary Shelley in general because in a lot of ways what little I know about her life she is a very interesting woman, and I'd really like to read more works by her that maybe aren't as popular if I do end up liking this a lot. So anyway, that's the update. I'll check in back with you once I finish volume one. Hi guys, so new location, awesome, but I was just filming a couple of normal videos, and I decided to do a little update for this one. I apologize for any noises in the background, but they were noises in the background of my other two videos, unfortunately, so just the way of life when you decide to film outside. Anyway, I did finish volume one of Frankenstein last night. It is currently Wednesday the 12th, so it took me a couple days just cause again, I'm focusing a lot on Atlas Drugged, but I did finally finish it. And this book is taking some turns that I was just not expecting. I just, to be honest, I didn't really know going into this what I expected, but it's just, first of all, it's dealing with a lot deeper topics than I was expecting. Like I knew it, address the idea of man playing God and things like that. But there's also this idea of grief and the effect that can have on us when we allow it to sort of control us and really take over our minds and also discusses loss and consequences and a lot of things that I just I didn't expect and I think everybody no matter how many times people say it deals with a lot deeper topics or it's a lot more impressive than just a fun story, gothic, creepy horror story that you might expect. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. And I feel like I've heard that so many times and yet I always think of Frankenstein like, I think it will do some fun things, but I always expected it to just be very like about the monster. I don't know, I just, it's just very different from what I was expecting. So very good though. I'm really enjoying Elizabeth's character and Justine was interesting to get to know as well. Her circumstances very, like the women in this are very interesting to me and their effect. It's very interesting to me that these women in this story seem to have a greater influence over Victor Frankenstein than any of the men in his life like he talks about his father he talks about his friend Clairval or whatever who he's close to and his teachers however there's just this like greater more intimate connection he has with the women in his life and especially with the loss of his mom early on I don't feel like that's a spoiler because that happens within the first couple chapters so after his mom passed it's interesting to see how much he latches on to female figures in his life and you have to wonder if maybe a huge part of that is because of both the influence of his mom as well as her loss. 
and if that is what drives him to really have these deeper connections with women than with men it seems like to me again not that he doesn't have any real strong relationships with men in his life like his father he clearly has a great respect for and his friend he clearly feels close to but I don't know just something I was noticing it's definitely not a focus of the story or anything but it's something that I noticed and I really thought was interesting so anyway I don't know how much of this I'm going to read today hopefully I at least a few chapters later tonight I am going to so I mentioned before that my brother is going on a mission for our church which I did a few years ago for me it was 18 months for him it's going to be two years and however he's the training portion you usually go to like this special place to get training and stuff for it but because of COVID they now do are doing it online for right now so he's going to be here for a couple months, but he's officially like been made a missionary and he we're doing a fun little video and a little bit of saying goodbye to him in the classic um, fashion of saying goodbye to a missionary. But since he's not actually leaving, we're kind of making a joke of it. So we're going to do that. And then I think I'm going to go to the bookstore because I have some books that I want to unhaul and they're having a bunch of like 40th anniversary for this bookstore um, celebration so I got like a discount voucher so I think I'm going to go and get a few things so I'll probably film some of that just to add a little spice to this vlog um, something a little different than just talking about Frankenstein but anyway so I will see you whenever I end up going <laughs> guys so just got back from the bookstore and thought I'd do a little haul again to mix up this little vlog a little bit okay so basically they were having a sale where if you got seven or more books that you would get like 18% off and then I also had credit there so I ended up only paying $15 for these seven books total so that's pretty good that's only like two dollars a book so pretty awesome and I'm just gonna show off what I got so first of all I'm almost done with The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas and I have loved it so much that I decided I wanted another Alexandre Dumas book on my shelf so I can pick it up whenever I want to and so I ended up picking up The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. I know nothing about The Three Musketeers to be quite honest. I've seen like parts of like adaptations of it but not enough to really know what was going on so very curious to see how this will go and Again, I loved Count of Monte Cristo so much that I think it will be fun to pick this up. Then I picked up a book that I only recently heard about and it just sounded really good and I read the first few pages of it and it seems really good. So hopefully I'll like it and that is Of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Mong? Mom? I don't know how to say that. But anyway, this I think is kind of a coming of age story. I don't even know when it was written. Hold on. 1915 and it looks like he was born. It's a French classic apparently. So I'm really excited to read it whenever I get to it. It's pretty long. So definitely one I'll have to plan for a little bit, but I'm excited about it. Next, I picked up two collections of plays by Aeschylus. So first I have Prometheus Bound and other plays by Aeschylus and then I have the Orestia by Aeschylus which I believe is three plays that are kind of a trilogy so anyway I've never read anything by Aeschylus but I just recently have learned about him and really have a lot of desire to read his stuff they just seem very interesting first of all Prometheus Bound I have a huge fascination with Prometheus as a mythological figure and I also know that there's a poem by Percy Shelley that is Prometheus Unbound or maybe it's his own play actually I think it's Percy Shelley's play 
um, that's kind of a sequel to this. So I'm interested in reading it for that reason. And that's why I picked it up. And then the Orestia, I only picked up primarily because Agamemnon is one of the plays, the figures that the play focuses on. And if you've read the Odyssey, you know Agamemnon uh, had quite a tragic story. So I was very, very interested in picking this up simply because of him. And hopefully I'll be able to read and enjoy the other plays within this collection as well, but we'll see. Then I ended up picking up The Lost Stories of Louisa May Alcott by Louisa May Alcott. She often published anonymously, and so these only recently were discovered as being hers. Uh, they were able to trace different lines and were able to figure out that these were her short stories that she wrote and collected them. I believe there's 19 of them in here. Nine. 19. 19 would be crazy. Nine short stories in here by Louisa May Alcott that have recently been discovered and really excited to read those. I haven't read anything by Louisa May Alcott besides Little Women, which is my favorite book of all time, so I'd love to read a little bit more from her. I know most of her other stuff is not like Little Women, so that's part of why I haven't really put priority of reading her other stuff because I'm not sure if it will be quite for me but now I have this so and then last but certainly not least I have a couple of Victorian literature pieces uh specifically by George Eliot I don't really know why I ended up grabbing two by George Eliot when I still anyway I should have thought this through a little better now that I'm thinking about it, but it's totally fine. I ended up getting Silas Marner by George Eliot and Middlemarch by George Eliot. I'm not sure at all when I'll read Middlemarch because it's so huge and intimidating, but hopefully eventually. I'm just really hoping I like George Eliot because I haven't read anything by her yet, but I really want to. So anyway, got both of those. They also had Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell, which is why I was like, I don't know why I got these two for George Eliot when I'm more interested in Elizabeth Gaskell. And I could probably get at least one more by Elizabeth Gaskell, but it's totally fine. <laughs> I'm glad that I got these. So yeah, that's my little haul. And I will update you later once I read a little bit more of Frankenstein. Hi friends, it is currently the 18th of August, Tuesday. Um, and I thought I'd do a little update. I have completed volume two of Frankenstein. I also have completed Atlas Shrugged and Count of Monte Cristo. So I've been able to focus a little bit more on this the past couple of days, which has been awesome. And I am still really enjoying it. Um, some updated thoughts with volume two. If you've read this, you know, in this part, we're able to get a lot more understanding of what's been happening with the monster. And it was very heartwarming and heartbreaking for sure. I, I don't know. I just, everybody always says that this has so much more to it than just like a horror story. And the more I read of it, the more I am beginning to recognize what they mean by that. It's just really powerful and dealing with a lot of very poignant issues, just in the fact that like, you know, insecurity and loving people regardless of possible prejudice and messages that are really poignant no matter what time period you're living in. And so I really am enjoying that. I also am still really liking Mary Shelley's writing style. It's just very easy to get into, very easy to understand. Again, there is a part of me that is struggling with the fact that there's not very much like back and forth dialogue in this as that's usually my preferred writing style or a storytelling style, I guess. Um, but this is a lot more just telling a story without any of the dialogue or without very much of the dialogue. So it's been a little different from what I usually prefer to read. But that being said, like I've been saying, really, really have been enjoying it. I'm very, very curious to see how it ends up in this final part because Victor Frankenstein has put himself in a position that he could go a variety of ways and it's still very unclear to me how we got to the point where we are at the beginning of this where Frankenstein is basically chasing his monster across the North Pole. So I'm really excited to see how that all plays out and how we end up there. Sorry this update is so rambly. I don't have very organized thoughts right now because I just started a new job a few hours ago and so I'm very much in that headspace, but I still wanted to give you a little update of where I'm at since I did finish volume two before I continue to read for today. Hopefully, 
I can finish this in the next couple of days. There's only like 60 pages or so left. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get through it. I will check in, I think, with you, let's say once I read halfway through volume three. I'll check in with you and let you know my thoughts and then we'll have our final update once I finish the book. So hopefully just two more updates and yeah. Hey guys, welcome to my new apartment. Um, I just recently moved out of my parents' house over the past few days, which has been exhausting but exciting. Um, I'm living with my cousin and my cousin's friend one of our friends and it's been fun so far um definitely an adjustment and again moving everything is always so exhausting but i did just barely it is saturday the 22nd and i have completed frankenstein i know i said i was going to do an update in the middle of the last part but i ended up just completing it because i was just really engaged and i didn't really want to share all my updated thoughts until i had completed it i decided so anyway I finished this, gave it 5 out of 5 stars, maybe it's more like 4.5 out of 5 stars, but on Goodreads I did 5 stars, and it was just so, so good, probably one of my favorites of the year so far. The writing was just beautiful, I found Victor Frankenstein, like I've said several times throughout this video, very interesting. I really liked the monster, just their dynamic, their relationship was so interesting because, you know, Victor Frankenstein really beats himself up about creating this monster um, because of everything that this monster has ended up doing. However, it felt very like he was regretting the wrong thing, that it wasn't that he should have regretted creating this monster, it was that he should regret not taking responsibility for this monster as soon as he created it. And so it just really dug deep into some themes that I feel like are kind of common in a lot of classic literature. I feel like this is a topic that is discussed, for example, in The Phantom of the Opera and The Hunchback of Notre Dame of, you know, who is really the monster? Is it really the one who is deformed or is it those who don't treat them as they should be treated regardless of how they look and so it's very very beautiful and interesting and I really love stories that focus on that type of thing I mean obviously the Phantom of the Opera is one of my favorite books and then the Hunchback of Notre Dame I feel like has potential to be that for me as well because I love the movie and the musical the Disney movie and the Broadway musical that actually has more of the tragic ending that the book has um, and I just love that story so I'm hoping once I get to reading that book that I'll really enjoy it but yeah I just really love that theme I really have a huge interest in reading uh, I think it's Elizabeth, my name is, what is it called? <laughs> Elizabeth, the one about Elizabeth Frankenstein um, that was written by something white. Oh my gosh, I, <laughs> I've read And I Darkened by her too. Anyway, I will put a little picture right here really quick to show it off. But anyway, I really have an interest in reading that book because I think it will be very fascinating after having read the original source material. I've noticed with that book, most people who like it have read Frankenstein and most people who didn't like it as much have not read Frankenstein or at least didn't really like Frankenstein. So I feel like because I liked this book, I've read it, I have a high chance of enjoying that and I'm really excited to pick it up at some point. I don't know when because I have so many other books I want to get to, of course, as always, but I really think it would be interesting to pick that one up. But anyway, yeah, I really highly recommend this if you haven't read this yet. It's definitely very creepy and there's a lot of dark aspects to it but it's done in a way that it's not over the top and it also has a lot of those deep topics like I've been mentioning that really bring the story full circle in my opinion and just make it so good especially for a book that's only like 200 pages sometimes that's hit or miss sometimes you end up feeling like there should have been more but with with this I felt like it worked very well and yeah very much recommend this and so glad I finally read it. So that is it. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read Frankenstein, what your thoughts were on it, as I would love to know. Also, if you liked this video where I did a vlog 
just reading one book and discussed all my thoughts on it. Let me know that too as I would love to make more like this. I might just do it anyway even if I don't really get comments on liking it because I enjoy doing it and it, I enjoy watching when other people do it. So anyway, again, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye!